Sri Lanka is affectionately referred to as the pearl of the Indian Ocean and is the 25th largest island in the world. The island is surrounded by 1340 kilometers of coastline and iridescent seas. Not just the ocean, the village reservoirs, both large and small, number more than 15,000, and they too offer splendid opportunities for a fisherman to make a livelihood. The coastal dwellers of Sri Lanka since ancient times have made fishing a principal livelihood. They used traditional equipment and methods. This mostly made it possible for their catch of fish to serve only as a subsistence. The geography of the location generally dictated the materials used and traditionally fishermen mainly used wood in the creation of their boats. A variety of wood including jack, wild mango, mara, breadfruit or teak trees are used to create the fishing craft. One significant detail about traditionally made boats or oru is that the wood was joined together with a technique of stitching or sewing. No nails or screws were used to hold the sections of wood together. There are a variety of fishing boats made even today which have maintained the original style going back millennia. They are known as Uru, Wallam, Teppam and Kattumaram. The National Museum of Colombo has the remains of an Uru dated to around the time of Prince Vijay's arrival in Sri Lanka. This shows that skilled boat builders existed even before this time. The oru or dugout canoe is the most common traditional fishing craft found in Sri Lanka in most cases found with an outrigger or balance log A variation of the same is the pillar oru and is a simpler form which lies low in the water and ideal for usage where the water is very still and therefore seen inland The bala oru or rural oru with a single outrigger is reputed to be one of the fastest traditional fishing craft in the world. Historically, they were used for deep sea fishing and were built very sturdily. To the canoe is mounted a large rectangular or square sail with bamboo poles. The slender design enables high speed on the seas. while the outrigger stabilizes the journey these boats can be still seen sailing out to the nigamba lagoon to catch shrimp in the latter part of the 20th century the rural oru was a iconic backdrop for movie settings and advertising the walla oru seen in the south of the country is used both for net and rod fishing Kattumaram is a traditional Tamil watercraft used in South India, Bangladesh and Sri Lanka. Essentially the Kattumaram is a log raft with three trunks lashed together. The word catamaran in English has been derived from this word. Though today it's confusingly used in reference to a completely different watercraft. The Teppama 2 is essentially a simple log raft held together with planks of wood. The steering of the craft is carried out through the use of bamboo poles. The flat design enables fishermen to move around and cast their nets. Traditional fishing was done with several types of nets. The seen net or madala is used by tying one end of it to the shore while the rest of the net is deployed in a semicircular shape. to the beach Typically a craft known as the mada lorua would be used to set out the net the net is then dragged onto the beach 
by several fishermen and helpers. It's a ritual where there is chanting and singing to keep the morale of those having the arduous task of pulling on to shore the heavy net. Both large and small sized fish get trapped within this net. Usually, after sorting the catch, the payment for the assistance is a share of the resultant haul. Sri Lanka too has a unique type of rod fishing. Fishermen not content with standing on rocks during the mid 20th century developed a technique of fishing from stilts. The fishermen balance themselves on their wooden perch and toil in the sun. This is a unique practice confined to a 10 km stretch in the area of Koggola, Kathalua and Ahangama in the south of the country. Lastly in lagoon fishing is employed the technique of VC Dala. These lagoon fishermen have confined their fishing area by not going out to sea and instead catching the lobsters, prawns and crabs found in the inland estuaries and lagoons. These humble fishermen lead arduous lives filled with the dangers of the high seas. In most cases, it enables them to eke out a meager existence for themselves and their families. The majority of catch ends up in fish markets, also referred to as lelamas. The tourist industry demands on seafood means that this is an additional market for the fishermen, who are able to provide their catch for a more profitable sale. Today in harbours scattered around the coast, one can see very few of these boats or fishing craft. The traditional practices are slowly being enveloped by fishing craft developed with fiberglass and modern materials of the 21st century. Fishing trawlers and larger boats too enable the fishermen to travel further with a bigger crew and stay out longer in the ocean. However, as your travels take you around the beautiful pearl of the Indian Ocean, you are certain to spot one or more of these traditional boats or fishing activities. Be sure to capture the moment.